back on the show today, George Cow. So George is one of one of the few people, along with maybe uh, Tad Hargraves and Mark Silver, that I trust in the marketing space. Uh, big on authentic marketing, offers online courses in that space, lots of good YouTube videos. We had him on before just for half an hour, and it was it was such a good one. We thought, you know what, let's get him back. So um, George, welcome. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be back. And I agree with you. I also recommend Tad Hargrave and Mark Silver all the time. So I'm really glad you've had them on your podcasts. Yeah. Let's, let's dive into the heart of it. So what is marketing when people say, hey, you're, you're a marketing guy. You know, what does that mean? You know, what, what's yeah. marketing to you? Well, marketing for me is different from what marketing is for, for most people, right? Like most of us have experienced marketing as okay, companies are trying to push their products on us. They're trying to interrupt us in ways that we don't enjoy. And uh, it, when we you know, join someone's email list, now they're trying to quote unquote market to us all the time with their products and services. And um, so marketing uh, generally has not been a pleasant experience for, for most people. And especially those of you who are here listening, you know, you're um, doing work that's more spiritual in nature, more um, heart-based. And so you probably want to stay away from marketing as much as you, you can, right? Even though we kind of have to do that to, to maintain our business. So what is marketing for me? <clears throat> I like to think of marketing, therefore, differently, which is that marketing for me is two things. Um, it, is, it is, first of all, an exploration of what our passions and experiences and skills are, which is kind of different from how people used to think of it. I think marketing is is the process of a business trying to figure out its calling because through expression we discover more about what our what our true voice is okay so marketing at first to me it's about exploration and then secondly to me it's about service it's where we're um marketing when it's done well is in is in service to the audience not trying to persuade them to buy something they don't want but to align with them and meet them where they are. Okay, so, so basically that's two things. Marketing is exploration, marketing is service. There's other things I can bring into this, but I'll, I'll just start there. <laughs> right, yeah. so you know, a lot of my students will think of, oh, marketing is sort of a necessary evil. You know? right. And that's, yeah. that's just a bad energy to be starting it with because oh, I don't want to do that. It's hard work. And especially when they love what they do, there's so much more, so much more appealing to go on another course doing what they do and you know, learn more about what they do. Whereas if they see it as a personally transformative practice, you know, a spiritual yeah. practice in itself yeah. or as a form of play or as a form of service. Oh my God. Yeah. Or as an ethically good thing in terms of, you know, it's about, as you say, that alignment that like, okay, can I let people know how I can meet their needs? Like that seems like that's, a good thing ethically, right? Like that's alignment a is such a good word that you're using here because like I said, if it's marketing is about exploration, it's trying to align with our deeper, more authentic expression, which is constantly being explored. I mean, you know, if someone says, oh, I, I've, I figured out my true voice, I figured out my true message. Well, there's more to you than that. You know, okay. you're always growing. Um, every time you uh, are, you know, you, even your own modality, you're always diving in deeper. There's always more yeah. to it as you, as you work with more people. Right. I guess with marketing, there's always that thinking out loud. I look at the website and I go, is yeah. this really me? Is this yeah. really what, I, is this the best I have to offer? Is this the deepest expression of what I have to offer? Yeah. Uh, so there is a, a, an, an iterative discovery process that's going on in the world yeah. of marketing. Totally. Website is one place, but I think most of the time where we do it is on social media and blogs and podcasts, you know, being interviewed or interviewing others. I mean, that's, that's marketing too. It's like anytime your message and your presence touches somebody else that is and, and, you know, related to your business, that is marketing. And so why don't we look at that as, okay, here I am. I mean, right now, this very moment, I'm exploring what I think marketing is. I've never said it exactly this way before. I've said it similar ways, but this is a new iteration of it too. So, and because I'm in conversation with you, so you bring something new to this. So alignment with our, you know, con continual exploration and alignment with our authentic selves. And then alignment with, okay, what is my audience needing most from me at this time? Like, what are they wanting? What, what if I share something like this, is it really going to help them? And the only way to know, actually, is to put it out there. <laughs> you know, it's a mixture, isn't it? There's a deep listening yeah. involved in marketing, which for me yes. is... Uh, 
it's like this empathic side of marketing it's the opposite yeah. of being psychopathic actually you have to have real empathy and then there's just the courage to just see what sticks do you know what i mean like yeah what if, yeah. like, I, you know, I, I just put out four, I followed your advice and I did, you know what, I'm going to do some, offer some evening courses for free at time, but then sold afterwards. Thank you for that. It was a great one. I had great signups between 500,000 people for each one. And wow. I just put four things out and I went, here's four things I really like doing. I don't know which one of these is going to be, you know, the most popular. And, you know, I'd say, okay, but, you know, just some of my sort of classic things I can do, you know, with my eyes closed, I know people will enjoy and um yeah you know so it's just an experiment i'm like well hey it's four evenings and whichever one does the best we'll just keep doing every two months you know it's like, that's amazing and, did and, you, and then, were you surprised by which one did well or? um uh, you know it's interesting like the the main one was just the one i was most known for like i was which talking is, about, what, what is the topic about working with the, working with the body for trainers and coaches it's just my thing that's what my book's about and I, you know i like that work it's interesting, like Tad, Tad Hargrave said to me, like, look, I just do the marketing for hippies workshop. I've done it lots of times. That's what I get known for. You know, you just got to do the same thing for a few years. And then there was another one, which was uh, the perp one around life purpose, which I used to do quite a lot of. So I guess I still have sort of a reputation for. Yeah. And then the other two that have been, the, the, they were the two sold workshops that I did well lately. And then tra stuff on trauma and stuff on ethical marketing. They're the two nice. that have been popular lately. Like, and they're, that, they're sort of like hot topics and things like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's like right now, this is marketing. But you know, it's the end of a long week. It's Friday, Friday afternoon. I'm tired. I've been writing my book. It's been hard work as well as fun. You know, I'm tired. But I'm not like looking at this like, oh god, I have to interview George. Yeah. Like, what a hassle. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like okay. Totally. As I looked at my diary, I was like, it's kind of a nice thing to have 5 p.m. Yeah. on a Friday. You know, I'm always totally. done. Like, like you yeah. know what I mean? It's like well, it's, and. and and so that's another thing that I want to bring into this, which is that to me, okay, so, so most of the time when you, when you learn marketing from the mainstream people, it, it kind of, you kind of get the sense that marketing is uh, either kind of like hunting or it's kind of like war. Like it's, right. or, 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 or third one is it's like religion. Like, okay, so hunting, marketing's like hunting because we're always taught to like bait people with our opt-ins, right? You, you, you get them capture to buy the, the email, you capture it. Here, they're a capture, right? Okay, <laughs> and no, then, I don't capture anyone's email. I don't have to give it to me, <laughs> like freely, you know what I mean? It's like capturing it. Oh, and then they have this word where you sell them a low cost product and then if they buy it, it's a tripwire. Right? Wow. A trip no, literally. Wire. This is what this is what digital marketing, you know, this it's a it's tripwire, which then triggers your system to then try to make the kill of like, you know, try to sell them higher stuff. <laughs> All this Even the idea so, of a sales funnel, right? Like we're trying to cram everyone. Yeah. Down yeah, that's another system. one. It's it's like, well, yeah, there's a relationship funnel, there's a yeah, trust there's, funnel, there's yeah, a right. funnel. So, so, so this, mar this is marketing as, as hunting. There's marketing as war, which is more, more Madison Avenue, like bigger stuff where it's kind of like you're, 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 you're in competition. You're trying to, account the literally marketing campaign, the word campaign comes from war, war language. So right, yeah. you're trying to, you're trying to like win more of the mind share of the market. And it's very like very bad battle oriented. And then there's marketing as religion, which you're you're trying to convert your your followers into you convert your followers is cult like isn't it it's really cult it's, it, it's, it is it is it is you know and and so so i i've, I've looked at all that i'm like is there a better way of, of, of relating to all this and i said well what about this marketing is friendship uh-huh yeah you know, it's like okay friendly. i'm just trying yeah. to like as i look at you mark okay I, i'm not trying to like persuade you into anything i'm trying to like how can i meet mark where he's at how can i be a good person where I'm helpful to Mark. How, and then one day, you know, Mark may help me out in some way, or when I make an offer or something, Mark might say yes. But it's, I, I think of it as, okay, if I'm building a friendship and then sometimes I have a party I want to bring people to, like I'm, I'm creating a party, I'm creating an event. Mark, hey, you want to come to my party? Yeah, you know, I think you might be, you might enjoy this. I, you know, I've got some people coming. No worries if you can't, you know, it's, it, you might have other stuff to do or it might not be a theme you're interested in. No worries at all. I have other parties I'll invite you to. So when I think of that as like inviting my friends to a, an event, a party, a launch, you know, whatever it is I'm, I'm selling. And if it's right for them, they'll do it. If not, no worries next time, you know, then it's like low pressure. Like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm going to just try creating various kinds of parties and I'll see what my friends are really into. Consent is, I think there's a piece I've just seen here around choice. 
Like you yeah. don't make your friends come to the pub. They want to come right. to the pub because they like your company, right? Like, yeah. like, like this, for me, this is what marketing is. It's not trying to pressure or hassle or persuade even. It's just like, hey, as honestly as I can, here are some choices that I think would benefit you. I could be wrong and you're a free human being to choose. I think these, given that you like X, Y, and Z, you might like this too, right? Yeah. And it's a free choice and there's this like, take it or leave it. It's no problem either way. And yeah. of course, there's a tantra in that, because that's all well and good in theory, George. But then it's like, part of me comes. There's a greedy part of me. Like I've seen, I've heard you say this on video that greed is always part of us. And there's that part of me that comes in and says, "Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get 20% signups and not 15%?" You know, like there's that part that comes in. So yeah. I think we do need to acknowledge that that is just part of human nature as well. So it is start You're objectifying right. people rather than well, having well, and, human beings, but. It's the same thing if I'm inviting people to party. Of course, I want more of my friends to come to the party. If I, if I yeah. want, if I have a certain, like, oh, I want more people to come to the party. Yeah, of course, I want more people to come. And if I, if, if not as many, as many people came, I'm like, mm, I'm, next time, I'm going to try something different. Maybe they don't like this kind of theme and I'm going to try a different theme and that's okay. But the, the other thing about friendship, right, is that most of the time, we're just having, we're just enjoying each other's company. I'm bringing something good to you. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what you're bringing and I'm appreciating it. And of course, in the marketing context, it's when I'm bringing something good to you, I'm posting on social media, some kind of content, I'm, I'm putting YouTube videos up or, or whatever it is I, I want to share. You don't have to do all of it. You just do whatever you enjoy doing. It could be an email newsletter. It could be a podcast. It could be YouTube. It could be Facebook posts. It could be Instagram. What, it could be on medium.com. Whatever you enjoy doing, however you enjoy, you know, connecting with your with your audience as as friends, you bless them with that, and then they bless you back with their comments, and you appreciate their comments, and you say, "Hey, thank you so much. I really uh, like that you brought in that point." Or, or maybe they disagree sometimes, and that's friends do. Say, so, "Hey, you know what? I, I'm really open to that idea. Hey, I, thank you for sharing. I might have a different experience, but I really appreciate that. That's where your experience is at. Great." Mm -hmm. Whereas. Whereas in a kind of a religion, right? It's like every, like I'm the only person who's right. Uh -huh. You know, I, and I if you, you to this thing, I already know. And yeah, I'm, I'm and it's, person. and it's, it's this formula and this is the only way to do it. And if you have, if you're doing it a different way, you're wrong. <laughs> you know? It's like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. Right. Lovely. So, lovely. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at some sort of practical things people out there might have then. And I, I've been watching a bunch of your videos again, which I always enjoy. It's always a good sign for me, you know, cause it's like, if I feel like someone's just sharing what they enjoy, I can watch it all day. But if yeah. I feel like they're angling on me for a sale, I don't right. want to watch it. Like in my body, I just feel it straight off yeah. golf. You know, I just don't, but it's just, I'm like, oh, cool. He's just George doing his thing. And I can watch it in the bath, George. You've had about five baths with me. You don't know this, but um, <laughs> You know, you're like, I'm just watching the bath, I'm chill, you know, I'm chilling out. Oh, George is talking about this thing, okay, cool, you know, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> My wife comes in, says something, oh, you know. But um, one, one I saw was good was like, how do you describe what you do? Because a lot of yeah. people get stuck on this, you know, they get yeah, kind of like, totally. I've got lots of, oh, I'm, I'm a transformational coach and I help people transform and I do transformational coaching. And I'm like, well, what, yeah. what do you do? I don't get it. So how, how, do, okay. you, how do you help people with that? You know, it's so interesting. I'm about to put a video up today that is going to kind of go against what a lot of the teaching is out there about this. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of give you a preview of it. Go for it. I think a lot of people struggle rightly so with describing what they do because I get it. How can you put your life's experience and, and your potential, your infinite potential into 280 characters <laughs> or whatever it may, whatever it may be, right? It's really, really hard to do. So, so I think there's, there's two things we need to create. One, yes, you, you can work on your, what I would call your intro statement. Hi, Mark, you know, in, 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 introducing myself on a podcast or I'm, I'm writing a bio at the end of an article or, or, what, or I'm in, at a networking event and I speak for 30 seconds about what I do. That's what I call your intro statement. Mm -hmm. And I invite you all just to work on this forever. Like it's okay. You don't have to get it perfect right now. If you don't have it perfect right now, you don't have to like delay this, the next thing you're launching or whatever. Okay. So that's one thing. The other thing that we need to create is the description of the offer mm -hmm. that we're selling right now. Mm -hmm. So Mark, you had your four courses. Each course had a different description. 
Right. So it's like, okay. I help these people with this problem, that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. You, you're, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you, you know marketing. So it's like, it's like each, cor- each offer description, whether it's an co- online course or whether it's a one-to-one service or whether it's a counseling or coaching package or whether it's a, a retreat, whatever it is we're selling, that offer has its own description and doesn't have to be a perfect thing. It's just describing, okay, let's get real practical. Who is this thing for? <laughs> and sometimes you even need to say who it's not for. Right, right. Now, I, I, Tad Hargrave is brilliant. Does he, he, he does this all the time, right? Like, who, who is this not for? And okay, so who is it for? Maybe who is it's not for? What is this meant to do for the person it's for? And how am I credible f- to offer this particular thing? I don't have to tell you about my life story and how when I was 11, this happened to me. No, well, it, it, unless, it's, unless it's relevant to this offer. What's the authority that I've got for this? Like, I don't right. know, like, uh, I... Uh, I help life coaches work with the body in a practical, safe way. And that's not everything about me, but that's pretty relevant to one of my main courses. Yeah. And I have authority for that. I wrote a book on this. I've been doing this for yeah. 10 years. I was trained yeah. by these people. We've totally. had 250 graduates from this course already. Here's some yes. proof. So, but, but I guess it's like, it doesn't, like, a lot of people don't want to be pinned down, I guess. And I, and I get that because that doesn't encompass who I am as a person, right? It's just no, one of not my at all. I mean, it's you're way more than that. I mean, I think of you as a brilliant interviewer. That's not part of your bio. I, you didn't say that at all. Right. No, I don't, yeah, I don't think of that as an identity okay. level thing, but I guess so, I've done 250 interviews now. So. That, that, well, so that, that's why I think that we need to separate this idea between intro statement, which to be honest, okay, I'll, I'll just be on, I, I'll be super honest about this. I think our intro statement is more of a vanity exercise. <laughs> God, what do you mean? Give an example, George. What's the intro statement like for you? Or for well, intro school? statement. Oh, I, George Cow is an authentic business coach who uh, um, breaks the mold of traditional marketing. And but I don't. I, so, so, so I'll, I'll be I'll be honest with you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Mark. I don't know what the fuck my intro statement is. I, I get sent, George. I get sent these from guests sometimes. They're like, "Can you introduce me this way?" And if it's like, hey, he's the founder of Authentic Business and he did this and his book's called Marketing Papers, I'm like, cool. But often it's like, he takes radical new approach to ground. I'm like, fuck off. I'm not saying that. You don't even believe that. I don't believe it. Like, right. this, is, this yeah. is no way. So, okay. so the <laughs> intro statement, I think, okay, so the, I, 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 I do think people need to kind of work on that over time. It, I mean, a cynical way is calling it a vanity exercise, but, but a more practical way is that it is a focusing exercise. I mean, it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a focusing statement that helps you to go, okay, all right, that's kind of what my business is about. And it also gives people a taste of what you are about, but it really, when they make the buying decision, so let's get real practical about marketing is when they're making the buying decision, they're looking at your offer. Yes. Yes. They're like, okay, who is, is this thing for me? Okay, what is this thing going to do for me? Why, do I, why is this thing important to me? Okay, and why is this person credible to do it? The, 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 the part of their bio, the part of their history, the part of their you know, experience that matters in this offer, do I trust that? Right. Okay, it, and then of the course you might want to... Right? And, like, and then you could tell me the, also yeah. the, the logistics as part of the offer description. Oh, okay, this, this course starts this time or the, in the one-on-one sessions with me, the first thing we're going to do is this work and then that, you know... Whatever it is, like, let's separate these two. The intro statement you can work on for the rest of your life. You can, it's going to keep evolving just like you keep evolving. Whereas the offer statement, the offer description, you need to, to work on that for each thing that you're launching or each time you are yeah. on the phone with a client and they're exactly. saying, so tell me about your one-on-one service. That's what you need to work on to say, all right, it's for this kind of person. This is what it does. This is the logistics of it. This is why I offer it, you know. And this is so, like- what takes, and you're very sweet about this, and I'm kind of brutal about this, but I think we've probably got the same core of it, which is there, there isn't much room for ego in marketing because no, like I do it in my language, no one gives a shit about me or you. No one gives a shit about the, the guy making the coffee, really. I mean, other than basic human decency, you know, it, it's, 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 like, it's like, can you make me the coffee? can you get me the result? That's the thing they're most interested in, the client. They, they don't care that you studied Iyengar Yoga in, in India for 10 years with someone they've never heard of. They care that they get relaxed at the end of their hard work day and they, 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 they can deal with their screaming kids, right? Like that's what they want is the, the, the outcome for them. 
like if I if I put my myself in that, well, I'm Mark Walsh, and I've done this, and I've done that, and I, this is my, you know, it's, they don't care. Yeah. Well, I'll, 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 you know, the way I, the way I'll say it is, they do have, if you, if there's some relationship with you and your, and your presence, yeah. your so-called brand, they will, you don't have to try so hard to make the offer sound amazing. Just trust. All right. Just so trust. for example, people trust Starbucks for coffee, right? So it's like whatever Starbucks puts out as a new coffee flavor, ah, eh, sure, I'll give it a try. You know, you don't have to try, you don't have to try so hard to sell me, hey, it's Starbucks, all right, it's probably gonna be okay. Uh, some people hate Starbucks, some people love Starbucks, but, <laughs> but that's the idea. Yeah, 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 there's some, <laughs> there's some, there's some brand out there you some trust, brand. right? Same I'll thing with, uh, right, same thing with Mark Walsh. Hey, I trust Mark Walsh for uh, any kind of embodiment work. So he's got a new course on some, some new fangled embodiment thing. He doesn't have to try so hard. I'm going to take it. Okay. Now, when what happens in marketing when people don't have some kind of relationship with that person is that right. person then has to use all kinds of persuasion tactics to to try to make the offer sound so amazing that like you would have to be an idiot to say no to this. You know, like it has to be so hyped up. It comes with you're going to make a million dollars in thirty minutes. <laughs> you know, by you know, by, by doing nothing. Right? It's basically or, relationship building, isn't it? Like over time, yeah. you know, people listen to these podcasts and they might listen to 50, a hundred episodes and yeah. then they might eventually look at a website of mine to look something up. They might That's eventually, right. then a Facebook ad comes up like, Oh, I know that guy. I listened to his podcast. Oh, I read his book. You know, yeah. okay. I trust or basically trust this guy enough to bother to spend five minutes reading the website because everyone's busy. Yeah. So why would they spend five minutes otherwise? You know, yeah. like, I don't read every email. I guess. Absolutely. And, we're all busy people. So it's like, okay, there's a bit of trust there. And okay, because there's always a risk, right? Even if it's free, the risk is of my time. That's a hell of a oh. thing of risk, really. So it, people it, need it's, to it's not, it's, it's your time, but also it's, is this guy, the free thing going to sell me on the next thing? And the next thing is, all, the, I mean, all of us consumers are more savvy than ever before. Um, we've all attended free webinars. <laughs> we, we, we've all opted into that free newsletter and then seeing what happens afterwards. So everybody knows. So if somebody has listened to you, your podcast, they've read your Facebook posts, they've seen your YouTube videos or whatever, wherever you show up and you, they've been blessed with content on specific topics, then they have a relationship with you on those topics. Mm -hmm. So that when you do sell whatever it is on those topics, they go, oh, yeah, I, I get that Mark is selling me on, okay, how, how, how can life coaches do better with working with the body with you know etc so oh because i've seen mark talk about that you know what i think a lot of it does come down to people are tired people are busy like if i think marketing i mean i just immediately just think you and tad and yeah uh, okay, yeah. okay yeah. mark okay who's that woman's name tracy someone but yeah. there's only so many names i can think of and i'm busy I've only got, okay let's say i've got a new website and i want a marketing guy to look over it yeah well, julia i've known for years and her emails on my phone and yeah. i can put julia an email and it's dead easy right. and you know, yeah. I know she'll do a good job. So it's like, okay, Julia, okay, I need one more guy. Okay, uh, Tad, okay, CC Tad. Okay, <laughs> and that's that sort of job done. And it's not like a big part of my day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like most of our <laughs> decisions are like that. They're just like, look, yeah. I'd rather be having dinner with my wife. So I just sort of want to okay. get that yeah. thing, even on fairly big decisions, I think people act like this. You know, they, yeah. they're just sort of tired. And that, that sort of ease and trust is really... You know, like your email comes up and oh, okay, George, I forgot about him. Yeah, he's a good guy. You know, like you're as yeah. much just reminding people you exist with it's free content as much as it's, it's, right? it's, you're right about that. People, when they're making decisions, they don't want to think. They don't want to have to think. They want the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, first first person that comes to mind, do I trust them on that? Okay, let's go with it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So because it's not it's people aren't people aren't spending three hours to shop. They're like finding, just like you said, the first three, you know, the first 10 seconds. So there's the, the, the other thing we're going to bring in is top of mind. Top All right. Mind Marketing is, is yeah, also yeah. about top yeah. of mind. So, yeah. so basically Mark, if you show up in my podcast feed on a regular basis, Oh yeah, that's right. Mark embodiment, 
you know, podcast. That's right. <laughs> this is why brand does matter in that, okay, embodiment, embodiment, embodiment. You keep showing up as that embodiment conference, One word. embodiment course. Oh, it's like, I picked a word. I just picked the fucking word, George. You I mean, <laughs> word. I'm like, it's a word I like. I mean, you know, I like the embodiment stuff, obviously. But right. right. So basically, you, you are pretty much owning that word in my mind and in the minds of probably thousands of people. Yeah. Thousands of yeah. people. Okay. So that's really helpful. Top of mind, okay, let's say that you, you can't figure out a single word. That's okay. You can still show up. If you show up often enough, wherever they, they, they're consuming content, you will be top of mind for whatever topics you're talking about. Right. And this, this is, is why, why you need to keep generating, keep giving, keep being creative. Okay, it, so, so let's, let's talk about this. So people go, oh my God, I don't want to like the chore, right? The chore <laughs> of having to create consistent content. George, please. Okay. How, so it's how, like me saying, oh my God, I've got to have another conversation with my wife. You know how many movies I've watched with my wife? I have to watch another movie with her? George, seriously, I have to talk to her again? Like, no, I just talk to my wife because I like talking with my wife. Like, well, let me, let, let's, 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 let's put it this way. The people who have a journaling habit, they don't go, God, I got to journal again? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the, the people who have a habit of, of, of painting, Oh my God, do I have to paint again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, no, today is my day to paint. Writers, the, the, all of, all, you know, the, we, we've all seen these quotes, right? From the, from the top, the, you know, the best writers in history. They don't go, God, I got to show up at 9 a.m. and write again. No, they say, okay, I know if I show up at 9 a.m., I'm going to write because, and it's not going to be easy always, yeah. but I'm going to show up at 9 a.m. and I'm going to write because I'm a writer. This is what I do. It's a discipline, okay. isn't there, in it as well? It's a like, discipline, and also it becomes, it. it becomes a, it's not a, it's not like, oh, I got to wash the dishes. Although washing dishes can be fun, by the way. Like if we, if we like enjoy the warm water and. Like washing dishes, <laughs> putting them away is the hassle, George. I like washing them. Right. <laughs> but like, okay. So, so like, okay, okay. Like, like a music composer. Okay. They show up, they compose music. They don't know what they're going to compose, but they show up and go, let me play with some ideas. How about, how about this idea, right? Or, or athletes, they show up and they train because they know that if they don't train, they get flabby, they get out of shape. And the same thing with us creators. If you're recording a podcast, if you're writing an article, if you're making a video, if you're, if you're on Instagram, you know that if you don't show up, you get flabby. Yeah, if you don't show I mean, up, you, you can't it regularly, explore. It's easy. And let me add something to that, George. I'd say as well, I, I tell students to pick a medium that they do enjoy. And yeah. then get a discipline because you know Twitter is not for everyone, Facebook's yeah. not for everyone, Instagram's not for everyone, podcasts aren't for everyone. Like I like podcasts because I just I like chatting to people. I'm Irish; yeah. and it's just easy, you know. Like <laughs> chat to people is not hard. So it's like for me, this is easy. I just send it afterwards. Two minutes work to get it processed. Someone else edits it. I'm like, great, it's easy. So I think you've got to find stuff you enjoy as well, but yes. then also have the discipline. Like I have podcasts two a week booked into my schedule. Maggie books them in. That's what I do. You know, and there's, there's yeah. a, there is a discipline to that. Wherever I'm in the world, you do the podcast. So, yeah, I call it, I call it, I call it a joyful discipline. I mean, right. you can call it whatever you want, but, but, but here's, here's my suggestion then. So discipline, I think is a great word if we can relate to it in a, in a, in a way like an athlete relates to exercise or a painter relates to painting. It is, it is a, it is, it is part of our identity and it's part of our creativity. Now, and it's part of staying in shape, you know, part, part of our work, because every time we write, every time we speak, every time we uh, record, we are, we are um, solidifying the ideas that we've been thinking about recently, and we are also exploring new ideas. Now, um, you do podcasts, it's easy for you because you schedule time with somebody there, and then you know that I'm going to be here, so we're going to have to do this, right? And, hope, and hopefully it's fun. I'm going, to, I'm going to recommend a tool for everybody who needs to write or who needs to record on their own. Uh, the tool that I use multiple times a day, it's called Focusmate. Mark, have, Focus you, have you ever heard of this? Focusmate. No, that's like two words, like a brand. I'm it's, writing down on my phone. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's one word, focusmate.com. It okay. just, it's just what like it, it sounds, F-O-C-U-S-M-A-T-E.com. I need this um, in my book writing right now, just because the problem oh, absolutely. with book is there isn't a short-term payoff. Well, I can do a podcast oh, yeah. on, I can do a Facebook post because I get all the little likes afterwards and it's done. You know, in interesting, minutes. interesting you say that, Mark, because, because this is how I, I, I've published, I've self-published four books and this is how I did it. Every single chapter was basically 
a post that I put up on social media. That's what I did in the first one. It worked great for me. I was okay. able to get something out of it all the way through, but this one, the structure is a bit different. Yeah. This one structure is different. Are, are you able to share anything from whatever you're writing each you know, day? I'm sharing little bits and I quite like that. And it makes me feel, okay, there's a little bit I can share, but it, this yeah, is okay, quite cool. a technical kind of book. It's, ah, okay. The last one was like, I got written because it was basically bite size of people that got made into blogs and all the blogs got put together and I turned it into a book. It was ADHD friendly, you know? Whereas this one's much, <laughs> this one's much more like kind of like a technical manual, yeah, uh, which would be I great see, when I it's see. done, but it's, it hasn't got quite the same. It's, it's got, hasn't got as many like quick wins and like easy. So, oh, I can share that bit, you know? So for, for things like that, Focusmate is amazing. I use it literally about two to four hours a day. I use Focusmate. What is it? Tell me about it. It's an app. So, a, so it's, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's amazing. So Focusmate is where you sign up for this. Um, it's free. It's free if you have like up to three sessions a week. If you do more than three sessions, I think right now it's $5 a month. I mean, it's incredibly affordable for the kind of life-changing stuff that happens here. So basically with like $5 a month, you could do unlimited sessions and you basically schedule time in the Focusmate to say, all right, uh, I'm going to do 9 a.m. I'm going to do 3 p.m. or whatever it is. And you think about, okay, what am I going to do during those times that I typically won't do? Because yeah. I procrastinate on it, like writing a book or doing whatever, writing an article. Okay, so those, those times in my focus, I'm going to be writing the book or I'm going to be writing the article. Okay, so then you show up in that time because someone else is going to be on the other end. And you, oh, you like, check like in. Oh, body system? Yeah, yeah you There's literally like check in. There, like, and he's going, hey, I'm, he's in San Francisco and he's working on his book. Yeah. And I'm in England and I'm working on my blog. Yeah, I'm totally. like, And he's like it's, there on the screen or some shit. So like, it's, they're, 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 they're there on the screen. You have to be on screen. And then, and then you check in for the first two minutes. Mark, what are you up to? Oh, you're writing a book? Cool. Hey, where are you at? Oh, yeah. You're, and then I'm here. So I'm writing a book or I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, cool. I'm, working on, I'm working on my bookkeeping. I keep procrastinating. I'm doing book. Okay. And then we, keep, we stay on screen <laughs> for 45, 45 to 50 minutes. And you're working on this. You can chat occasionally. If you say, all right, I just got done with you know, the first three paragraphs. That was really yeah, hard, yeah. whatever. And you just go... And then at the end, you check in verbally again. Mark, how did it go for you? So it's always you like an your hour. chapter. You do it like for an hour. It's like nine. You do it for minutes. 50 minutes. Yeah. Great. Because that's a good amount of time to work anyway. Because then you can go yeah. to the toilet, have a cup of tea, come back and do another yeah. hour or change activities, right? Yeah. Like that therapeutic, it's amazing. The therapeutic hour, as they call it in therapy, I think is a, yeah. a good move. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good, totally. man. I like that. So, all right. Yeah. One for state. Thank you. I'm writing a book right now. So this is going to be uh, helpful to me. I, I will definitely give that a try for my next book writing session tomorrow i've just signed Ooh. up for it actually while we're talking yeah, and, awesome, um, awesome. here's something i wanted to tell you about george i'd love you to take the lessons out of this i think you'll love this right i sent uh this uh, I sent out two newsletters lately and i'm not sure if the second one was a mistake the first one i think was was basically i didn't have anything to write that week i would send out a newsletter it just so happened there wasn't much going on and i just sent a message out that said hey guys i just want to wish you all well like i hope you're well genuinely i hope you're doing okay and I know this COVID thing's kind of rough and some of you have lost money and some of you are lonely yeah. and it sucks. And I just want to sort of wish you the best and um, whatever you're going through right now, you know, everything changes. Mm. It wasn't trying to offer really any coaching though. It was just, it was kind of like, like you'd be nice to your mom or something, you know? Well, marketing is friendship, right? Right. It was just, it was totally genuine. It was just like, I hope you guys are well, you know? And at the end, that's just something, oh, by the way, uh, you know, a course is ending tomorrow and there's, a, you know, something else. And, but it, that was genuinely an afterthought. Like, I only added that right at the end. And I was like, oh, shit, I could say my course is coming up, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And I forgot, like, sales. Were on the like, we, We'd done our end of early bird, and that's normally when you get all the sales, end of early bird. Right. So I wasn't really thinking about it. I was like, okay, whatever. And it went out, and I got over 300 replies that were just what? like, thank you so much. The most wow. replies I've ever had from an email. The average number is like five to ten. This right. was a hundred, you know, if I get 10 replies, I'm like, wow, it's a good email. 300 replies, people oh just saying, God. thank you so much. I already knew that it was like, it got the zeitgeist somehow. Um, the sales for the course went through the roof. We hit oh. another 50 sales, which I wasn't expecting at all. And that wasn't wow. the intention in any way. Cause I had thought, well, it's over, early birds over. They've already been emailed. I'm not trying to spam them. I just added it at the end. Yeah. And um, I also got three pieces of hate mail. Um, <laughs> people saying, how dare you? How dare you wish me well? And I like that. And this wasn't any like, you know, because I say some stuff. Oh, sometimes. no. I, I do off colored jokes. I say rude stuff. I'm a bit. Well, this is part this of. This wasn't this. This was like the. This is authentic. Uh, that's, just, that's part of why I like you. You know, like, like <laughs> otherwise, I mean, this makes your podcast. This makes your, your stuff more interesting, to be honest with you. Because otherwise, I mean, it's not like you're trying. It's just who you are. 
you know? Sure, but I just thought this was funny. Like, there's a couple of lessons for me. One was just authentically being relational with people is a huge win, yeah. both yeah. in terms of love, like they obviously, people obviously enjoyed it, yeah. but also in terms of um, the sale, which again, genuinely wasn't like a yeah. trick, yeah. you know, just, yeah. I was yeah. just yeah. like literally added that as an afterthought. And then the second idea was, no matter how nice you are about what you said now, <laughs> some people are still going to hate you for it. Right. So I kind of went, I kind of, well, this is what happens. The larger your audience, the more hate mail you will get. Right. Just in terms of. So everyone has to understand this. Like if you are starting to get some trolls on your social media comments, or you're starting to get, um, you know, uh, yeah, hate mail, then you should, you know, say, oh, got it. My audience is starting to get large enough. (laughs) That's starting to happen. You know, I read a Tim Ferriss article on this. It's just like, look, you know, the average celebrity at any one time is dealing with three stalkers. Oh, and, it's, and it's just like, if you're at a certain wow. level of celebrity, that's just normal. And, and 10 yeah. court cases, they're suing 10 different people oh, or being geez. sued by 10 different people at any one time. Like wow. that's just a normal thing once you're at like Hollywood kind of celebrity level. Yeah, 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 so yeah. That must be a nightmare. Yeah, that, but I've already because... seen, once your list starts growing into the thousands to the tens of thousands, you know, like I've already seen that. and it, there's a, there's a thick skin to an extent because it's hard to realize it's a numbers game. I think, okay, so one percent, 99% enjoyed it, one percent didn't. Yeah, okay, that's pretty yeah. good, you know. No, that's fantastic. I mean, well, and if you think about this, uh, okay, so there's this thing called the negativity bias, yeah, yeah, right, which is which is a proven, not proven yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's as proven as it could be in, in psychology, which is human beings, we pay attention to the negative reactions we get, the negative interactions far more, I, I, something like seven yeah. to 10 times more than the positive. I mean, we, we take for granted the positive ones. We forgot about them already. Whereas we probably got 10 times more, like you said, than we got the negative ones. But the negative ones, why is that? Well, our evolution, obviously, because the, the, yeah, yeah. the negative thing would have killed us in the yeah. past. So we have to be super pay, uh, attentive to it. So now the same thing, but now of course, we're not gonna eat some bad berry on the tree and die. Okay, so now we have to shift our mind and go, wait a second. Ah, this is evolution. I can consciously evolve towards, let me pay attention and give thanks to the 297 <laughs> grateful emails that I got. My God, let me read them again. <laughs> I replied to every single one of them, even just with a smiley face, because I was like, well, if they're oh. taking the time to message me, I think it took me about a week, but I got through it. Well, I, and I want to extract a lesson here for everybody, right? Like, The fact that you, and I, I've no, I mean, I just in our interactions, even in the beginning, when, when I, when you first reach out to me, like, like you are so responsive, right? Like, and I see you in the comments on your Facebook and everything and and elsewhere, like you are so responsive to your people. And it's simply, sometimes it's just the, the volume of work that we're willing to do that really makes a difference to our success. And a lot of people have this fantasy that, Oh, you know, and, and we've been sold on this idea of easy business. Oh, business is supposed to be easy because everyone's trying yeah. to sell us yeah. programs. Oh, you can make six figures in 30 minutes or whatever. No, business is about people and being nice to people, which yeah, means yeah. that you have to be willing to reply to their emails or reply to their comments. And when you do that, people go, my God, Mark replied. Even spent, if it's a smiley I face. Hour, I spent an hour on Facebook replying to all the messages in my other folder last night with a voice message because I was oh, too tired. Yeah. It was like nine o'clock at night. And I just went, hey, thanks for your message. Really appreciate it. Okay, next person. Hey, okay, yeah, this is a therapist I recommend. Okay, yeah, and they're all, you know, and, wow. and like, there is probably a point where I need to stop doing that. I mean, <laughs> is there, you know, there's a line, right? If I'm doing it at nine o'clock at night, and obviously I outsource things and my secretary yes. helps, but yeah. my secretary can't write personal replies. You know, so that's not, it's not right. I want to look at the well, Mark, I mean, you, you, this is why you are way more successful than any other embodiment uh, teacher that I've had the pleasure of speaking with because you're willing to do that. Now, again, not, I'm, I'm not asking everybody to, to do that because I actually probably have, uh, I have a good work ethic, but I don't think I work as hard as you do. Um, but I also have a smaller audience than you do. And, and, and let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk a bit about this. Like, like we, like we, you don't, you don't have to, everybody listening to this, like you don't have to have a 10,000 person email list to have a, to have a business. That's really good. A thousand customers is loads. If you, if they're loyal customers, even 200 customers is plenty. If they come into your workshops regularly, right? Oh gosh. E- even, even if you have, I mean, how, how many of us have, you know, 20 clients we see every week. 
Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very, very few people. Like if you had 20 clients you saw every week, that's, you know, six to $10,000 a month probably. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like, we don't have to have that many people. We need to like, if you have a hundred email subscribers that are really right for you and yes. you really take care of them, that may be all the business you ever need. I'd much rather have a list of a thousand people where the yeah. list at a hundred percent open rate and they were all into my courses and they all <laughs> right. rate all my courses than a hundred thousand where, you know, the open right. rate's 20% and you yeah. know, some people don't like it. Some people like, you know, some people like it, but will never come to a course. It's kind of right. like a lot of work, you know, it's a Whereas, lot of work. It's a lot of replying. It's a lot of <laughs> emails you think, that you get with yeah. that in mind. What do you think like narrowing things down? Because we've developed this big list, particularly with a conference because it's so broad and these big yes. events. And we're now doing two things. So on the, like we had all these people come in from the yoga and body yoga summit and the body trauma summit. And we have another bunch come in from the next summit. And on the one hand, I want to like welcome them in and say, Hey, here's some free stuff, you know, welcome yes. in, you know, you know I want to greet them like you would people come to your house and give them food and, you know, yeah. be like, Hey, here's a bunch of cool stuff. But also I know some of them aren't my clients. Right. Like I know some of them yeah. in fact are gonna, so I sent out another email a week later. And I put a joke in that email, which was a little off color. It was about <laughs> long haired hippie men trying to sleep with you at, at Tantra conferences and doing overly eye gazing. And it was funny, frankly, and it was true, but it was also a few people were upset by it. And I, and, and I think the reason was they'd had, you know, trauma and bad experiences and that's fair enough. And they emailed me and I, you know, I chatted to a couple yeah, of them and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. most of those conversations went pretty well. And, you know, thanks, you know, it's okay that they messaged me and, um, you know, they had reasons for that anger kind of thing that was there. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying they're bad people or anything, no. but they're probably never going to be my customers. Right. If, yeah. if, if that sort of joke is going to upset, like literally one email has came in in capital letters, I am offended, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Yeah. And it, and it was like, okay, you've got a right to your feelings and you're not a bad person, but you're not in my tribe. This yeah. Is, you know what I mean? Like, how do you... Yeah. Do we so, want to like filter that down? Right. So there's, <laughs> that is... that's, the, that's the exact word. Like, and this is something that our friend Tad Hargrave does such a good job of teaching about, which is marketing is about filtering. Yeah. It, it's marketing is not, and this is something so important for us to remind, remember again and again, marketing, good marketing is not about trying to please everybody in the world. Right. I mean, good, as we know, good coaching isn't, good teaching isn't. You know, good relationships aren't about trying to please everybody in the world. Good marketing is about serving the people who are most meant for you and serving them really well and meeting them where they're at. Again, the people who are meant for you. And also, therefore, it means you use the word filter. Tad teaches about this. It's about filtering out the people who are not meant for you, which means, and what I talk about all the time, is expressing your authentic self is a wonderful thing because. And, and, you know, let me, let me, let me just talk about this in a different way. I make mistakes all the time. Okay. And the other day I recorded a, a group call. It was with some of my, some of my clients. It was, you know, maybe like a, a two dozen of my clients. And I said something that later on, I'm like, damn, I think I was too, I, I, I said, I, I, I talked about a mistake I made in the past mm -hmm. that it was somehow related to what I was talking about. And later I'm like, oh man, I, I, I kind of regret saying that. Uh -huh. That was my immediate reaction after the call. And then I slept and I had a hard time sleeping that night. Okay. And then the next day I, I realized something. I'm like, if I lose any clients over this, it's okay. Because I don't, I, I don't have to please anybody. And actually, to be honest, Mark, I don't want to be liked that much. Yeah, I think trying wanting to be liked is a huge barrier to authentic authentic marketing, right? Yeah. You, and just I, authentic relationships, right? Like if I'm trying to please, I can't serve, and if I'm trying to right. please, I'm always going to be holding part of myself back. So real connection is impossible. Real connection is impossible. Real creativity is impossible. The real uniqueness that it's only yours to express in this life is not possible. So okay. what do you say to people who aren't as disagreeable as me? Because I've got a reasonably high capacity for this, my personality. And it still stings me. I'm not, you know, it still oh, yeah. stings when I get that email saying, well, you're a racist. I'm like, where does this come from? <laughs> no, know? no, nobody, nobody wants to hear that. It hurts everybody to hear that. Yeah. So, so, like, so, so basically, I, uh, you know, like, I don't want to be liked too much because I don't want to be a guru. 
I, I don't, I, and I don't actually even want that large of an audience. I want just a, a good sized audience, people who really like who I am, who really get who I am, who don't mind my mistakes and who, who say, Hey, George is the imperfect human being. And by the way, I, I actually posted about this, that exact experience. I said, here's what happened. I, I didn't go into the details. But I said, I said something I regret, but then I realized that blah, blah, blah. And then, and then people commented and said, George, I was on that call. And you didn't say anything that offensive, like, like, like something that like we always have to remember is the negativity bias is strongest within us too. Like we are so sensitive yeah. to the, the mistakes yeah. that we thought we made. People just go, ah. I think about it as well. That like socially, if we grew up in little caves with a hundred monkeys in, you know, it's like if one of those hundred monkeys hated you, yeah. that was a problem. When you had that's a, a that's a big problem because but when it's if, you, if you get ostracized by your tribe right. you literally die in the wilderness and even one person in that cave try to undermine you and telling the oh, person yeah. to marry yeah. you're an asshole and you know what i mean like that's dangerous. like one person yeah. can do a lot of damage in the social system that you're deeply yeah. you know with 50 100 people and but that's we how we evolved that so we have in, that within us yeah yeah and we're applying that within us to this weird internet situation where it just doesn't make sense anymore because yeah. there's so many more monkeys out there you know <laughs> Sure. You can have a million people hate you, and even if there's you know a thousand people who love you, that's all that matters. I mean, by hate, I, that's a little too strong. But let's say let's say you turned off a million people. Like, oh yeah, that's not that guy's not for me. But a thousand people love you and your work. That's all you need. So, um, so back to this question of well, how do we deal with the guy calling you a racist? Yeah, for well, some sensitive people, especially as well. Some of my students are so scared of this because they see yeah. some of the stuff that gets thrown at me on Facebook. They can see it because it's public. And they're like, yeah. I, I never want to be in that position. It terrifies Okay, me. I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, it's going to happen if you want to do any kind of online marketing. It's going to happen to you at some um, point. It's, it might not be as, as, as hateful as you're a racist, uh, but it might just be some comment that's like, yeah, it made me feel a little uncomfortable. It criticized me in a way, even if it's subtle. Okay, here's what I recommend. Like, we, 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 we all need a policy for dealing with disagreeable comments, okay? And here's my policy. If the person is willfully trying to hurt me, mm -hmm. okay, if they're being a jerk willfully, then I block them. Yeah, delete them. And it's okay, ban them, block them, whatever it is that platform has, unsubscribe them. It is your right, and, and it's also important for your mental health to do this. To say, oh, you know what? I'm going to consciously say, this person is not part of my tribe. And it's you look, you've got a clear line like that because you don't have to clear. think about it. Like, I have a clear line, which is anyone can disagree with me online, but if they oh, insult me or anyone else in the discussion personally, right. they get one warning. And if they do it again, they're out forever. And me, I got, if they're, if, they're, line, if they're willfully trying to hurt, if that's my sense, like they're actually trying to hurt me, then that, there's a problem there. Okay. The, the, and then my, then the other policy, okay, so I have one policy is willful hurt, okay, you're out. Second is if they are trying, if they're disagreeing with me, they're, they're honestly giving their opinion, and they felt hurt by something I said, but they're not trying to hurt me back, because maybe they felt hurt, and they're, they're just saying, you know what, George, it's really unfair you said that, or what about this situation? I, I, I really disagree with you. So that's okay. Then we can have a conversation, and I might learn from this. It helps me to open my mind. And this, yeah, there's, there's that. And I think this whole thing is a spiritual practice where we don't make yeah. our self-esteem and our happiness dependent upon the p opinions of others generally. Now that yeah. you'd have to be totally enlightened. So I kind of go, okay, if I can't quite meet that standard, I'm going to make it dependent if I have to on my business partner, my best friends, my two main colleagues, my wife. There's a small circle of people whose opinions, and I filtered those people for two criteria. One is they care about me and the second one is they're they're competent and not in every domain right so i care about your opinion on marketing george i don't know if i want to care about your opinion on music taste because I, I don't know what, like, what your music tastes like i just don't know anything about what music you listen to you know yeah, yeah. so it's like i filter for those two things i love that and, and then i've got okay this person's kind and competent they care about me and they're giving me things like that it's hurtful i don't like to hear it but i'm still going to listen to this that's as right. opposed to I have no relationship Brilliant. with this person. I made That's this right. mistake the other day. I gave some feedback to someone without real permission and uh, there wasn't really the relationship for it. And, you know, I was right, but aren't we all, you know? And it's, <laughs> it's, it's, and it was just, there wasn't a the relationship there for it. And she was like, yeah, 
you know what, I'm, I'm not interested in coming on your podcast anymore. And I was like, wow. you know what, that's actually kind of fair enough. You know, like that, that was a fifth date move and I did it on a first date, you know? So, it's, it's, so yeah, we all make mistakes with this. Huh? Yeah, we all, we all do. And, and, and we have to, something that you're, you, everyone's going to discover here as you, as you do marketing, and this is something that I keep being surprised by, like year after year, there are so many people in the world. <laughs> like, like, like literally like, I, like, Mark, how come we didn't know about each other until this year? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. like you didn't yeah. just start your business this year. No, you're 13 years, 13 years. Right, like, and I've been around for more than, years. Uh, for 11 years. Like, how come, like, there are so many people in the world. Like, there are so many people that you haven't even met. And this is, this is what I like to say, right? Like, like you, in the, in the lifetime of your business, maybe you'll have a thousand true fans. And guess what? Most of those true fans haven't even met you yet. Like you haven't even, yeah. they haven't yeah. even heard about you yet. Yeah, so yeah. if you think about this, like, like maybe for everybody speak, you know, everybody we're talking to here, maybe they have a, a Facebook page of a hundred fans, you know, and out of those hundred fans, maybe like 10 of them are true fans. Like, and, but when I say true fans, I mean, people who just really get you, they really love your work and you really can't even make a mistake that will turn them away because they just really like who you are. Okay. you got 10 true fans right now you'll probably get to a thousand or 500 in the lifetime of your business. People, 500, thousand will just get you. They'll buy just about everything you put out there. And most of those thousand haven't even heard of you yet. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There That's are so many people. So you like, when you're creating content, think about those thousand future ones who will eventually hear about you. Don't worry about the, you know, the 90 others who are kind of your fans right now, but they don't really get you. Talk to those, those 10 and talk to those thousands who are going to love you, who are going to hear about you. George, we need to wrap up fairly soon. I've got a yoga class in the hour. I yeah. promised myself <laughs> I'd get to to have a little bit yeah. of chill time today doing my body, doing that embodiment stuff I talk about. And I want to ask you like one last question here. It's something like, like what do you think is the biggest surprise when people start learning about marketing? Is there something that, like, you know, the fact that it's a spiritual practice is yeah. probably unbelievable, mm -hmm. actually, to some listeners. And it's yeah. for other listeners, it's on the tip of their tongue. You know, that was a surprise for me. Another surprise was I would meet really decent human beings like you and Tad. You yeah. know, I like talking to you yeah. and Tad. And yeah. like, like what, what do you think It's like some of the biggest surprise? I kind of want to like, it's yeah. like a, it's like here in me. It's like what okay. opened the blossoms as a surprise with this stuff? Um, I spend money, I just want to, I, I spend money on Facebook ads most of the money I spend on Facebook ads is not to sell stuff. It's actually just to bless people with content. It's not that the, when you see a Facebook ad from me, most of the ads are just, oh, this is some helpful, inspiring message. The biggest surprise for me has been that marketing most of the time is simply a ministry. Ministry, okay. what do you mean by that? Ministry, meaning, meaning usually people think, oh, marketing, I gotta sell something, I gotta make money. That's, that's like the, the typical equation to yeah, me, yeah. marketing most of, because you got to think about this, like, like community most building. Of, you could say community building, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you yeah. could say ministry community, but even if they might not even join your community, that's the point. Yeah. Like, like most of our marketing when, when it's done right, it's just simply blessing and helping and inspiring people. That's it. Uh -huh. I mean, well, like, like Mark, most of the people who listen to this podcast might never buy from you. Yeah. 1% maximum. And you know what? That, I'm okay with that. I'm really okay. With that. It's, it's, I'm not but, but you got to like, realize like, like if we look at, and again, just back to the spiritual, we look at the lifetime. Like when we do our life review at the end, like you're going to see all the people you helped with that one podcast episode you put out or that one Facebook post that they yeah, never even yeah. followed you. Maybe they never, they just read that thing and somehow it shifted the, the trajectory of their day which then shifted the trajectory, trajectory of their life a little bit. Like you have no idea yeah. how many people no, 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 you blessed. Like today, right? Someone could listen to this and as a result, it lifts their mood because they thought it was funny and they don't beat the shit out of their kids tonight. Someone else could listen to this, apply it to their business, make a million bucks and end up, you know, using that to help people. Someone, yeah. you know, we just, someone else could listen to this and it's like, you know, it stops them killing themselves because they see a new direction for their business. We just don't know. You've got Golden Gate Bridge behind you, you know, like we just don't know who's walking across that bridge right now. What if they're jumping off or walking to the other side? And it's, um, and, and it's also, the, it's an also the reason to share rather it's than also the ripple. Yeah. It's like someone, someone might hear something you, you say or receive, and then they might just say one thing to somebody else who then goes on to save someone else's life. I mean, you don't know the, the ripple effect. That's, that's, that's what surprises me the most. 
and that, that's what I that's what I keep holding on to. <laughs> yeah. I first realized this for the podcast. I went to New Zealand on holiday with my wife, and we put it out on the podcast. And we ran out of money, like, as my wife ran out of money. And we were, I didn't have any money. And I'm in New Zealand, and I've kind of got no money. And people were letting me stay in the house who listened to the podcast. Oh, wow. And this was, uh, we'd blown loads about this big trip to Japan. It was like a once-in-a-lifetime, three-month trip. Wow. And, I, and someone picked me up from the airport. Chris, actually, if you're out there, Chris, hey, Chris. Someone picked me up from the airport wow. in Sydney and saved me 50 bucks for a taxi. And someone so put funny. me up in their house for a week in New Zealand and showed that me around and tipped me amazing. up. Hey, Matthew. And it, it's, 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 and it was it was like, well, I didn't expect that from the podcast. Yeah. You know, that was never my intention when I started the podcast two and a half years yeah. ago, to get free lifts from Sydney Airport or free accommodation yeah. in Auckland, you know. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's funny how it does come back to you. And I, and I, I think there's almost like um, if you start any marketing that's driven by I'm trying to get something, people feel it and it doesn't come back to you very well. The Where shorter, is it genuine given this? There's a magic at play there. I really think there is. The shorter term you need something from somebody, the more you have to manipulate them. Uh, the longer term you're seeing the relationship, the more you can be authentic and just relate to them out of genuine interest, genuine caring, because you know that, hey, you're going to be together for life. You know, so... Great. And uh, where do people find you online, George? And your website and like, what's a couple of things on the website people might want to look at? Because there's a lot on there. So yeah, I, I would just say Google, Google my name. <laughs> Google my name, George Cow. I'm grateful that I'm, I'm well SEO'd for George Cow, my name. And then just find, you, find me, watch me or read me wherever you want it. Like some people like YouTube, some people like to read articles. You Google my name, you'll see all of it there. Um, basically, if you go to my website, there's two things you could read. My best articles about marketing, they're all in, there in one place. And then my best articles about what I call joyful productivity, which is working with joy, working with peace. Um, those two things are right there on my site. So. George, really appreciate it. I'll be seeing you in the bath again at some point, no doubt. Always <laughs> welcome back on the show. This has been Thanks, fun Mark. and useful and stimulating as ever. So, George, thank you. Oh, it's Cat Cow. K A O, just in case people are hearing that. Thank you. That's Googling. my last name. K A O. Yeah, and George is George. George, thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, mate. Pleasure.